the Michael Jordan Pog is back with a game that features Michael Jordan and Jordan versus Bird for your Sega Genesis. Hey, look, it's Jordan versus Jordan. Let's go ahead and take Jordan versus Jordan, pop it in my Sega Genesis, and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the game. Jordan vs. Bird was published by Electronic Arts and carries a copyright year of 1992. It is based on the 1988 computer game, which itself was a sequel to One on One Dr. J vs. Larry Bird. It was programmed by Michael Abbott, who also designed the Skate or Die sequel, Ski or Die. It is the year 20XX, and aliens have destroyed the majority of the Earth, except for the cities of Boston and Chicago, due to their love of the early 1990s McDonald's showdown commercial that pitted Larry Bird against Michael Jordan. Now, for their amusement, they are having Jordan and Bird face one another to see whose city will be spared and whose city will be turned into a waste management area for the aliens. Yeah, there, there wasn't any backstory in the manual, so I hope you don't mind that I made one up. Jordan vs. Bird is a basketball game, surprise, surprise, for one or two players when playing the one-on-one -on -one portion, or for one to four players when playing either Larry Bird's three-point contest or Air Jordan's slam dunk contest. For the one-on-one -on -one contest in a two-player game, the first controller controls Michael Jordan and the second controls Larry Bird. In the single-player game, you could choose which player you want to be. According to the manual, both Jordan and Bird play differently, more like their real-life counterparts. However, I personally did not notice much of a difference between the two, and it wasn't uncommon to see Michael Jordan nail a three-pointer or Larry Bird perform an assortment of dunks during the game. You can also choose whether the game will be timed with options of two-minute, five-minute, 8 minute or 12 minute quarters or if the game is going to be scored where the winner will be determined by who first scores either 11 points, 15 points or 21 points. And by the way in this game a normal NBA 2 pointer is worth a single point and a normal 3 pointer is worth 2 points. You can also play the one on one mode in either an arcade style where the players never get tired or a simulation style where the players have a fatigue bar that depletes as you expend your energy making you more likely to foul and miss shots. In the single player mode, you can also choose one of four difficulties with recreational being the easiest, then varsity, then college, and then professional, which is the hardest. You can also decide to play losers out, where the person who gets scored upon gets to take the ball out, or winners out, where the person who scores gets to take the ball out next. You can also turn on or off the computer controlled automatic instant replays during the game and the music that plays before the game begins. For the controls on both offense and defense, you use the D-pad to move your player. On offense, pressing A quickly will turn your man 180 degrees, and holding down A will have your man drive to the hoop instead of shuffling his feet. You hold B down to jump and then release it to shoot the ball. You can also press it quickly to perform a fake shot, and once the ball is shot, you can press B again to try for a rebound or to tip in the ball. Pressing the C button will have your man automatically perform a hook shot unless you are driving to the hoop, at which point the C button will sometimes have you perform a dunk instead. However, if you're playing a game with the fatigue bar, the bar must be in the green to perform a dunk. On defense, you can hold A to run and tap A to try to steal the ball, and press B to jump and try to block the shot or rebound the ball. There are also fouls that can be called on both sides of the ball during the game, including traveling, offensive foul, 24 second violation, reaching in and delay of game. Whenever you rebound or steal the ball on defense while in the key area, you need to clear the ball by going past the free throw line. For the Air Jordan Slam Dunk Contest, you will automatically be given control of Michael Jordan and have to select three dunks from the starting screen. Once it's time to perform a dunk, you press A to begin running. When Michael Jordan steps on the green center portion of the takeoff gauge, you press and hold the B button to jump, and then you're supposed to release the B button to successfully dunk the ball when the ball is on the rim. After each dunk, a panel of five judges will score you on a 10-point basis, and after all three dunks, your scores will be totaled and the commentators will let you know how you did. In Larry Bird's three-point contest, you have 60 seconds to shoot five balls from five bins for a total of 25 shots. Every successful shot is worth a single point except for the money ball at the end of each bin, which is worth two points. You press the A button to grab the ball from the bin, the B button to start your shot, and the C button to release the ball. This can be a little bit tricky as the computer will not register the B button until you have fully grabbed the ball from the bin. There is also no gauge in this mode, but it seems that your best bet is to release the ball at the top of your shot. At the end, your score will be added up, and once again, the commentators will let you know how you did. 
Graphically speaking, most of the game looks pretty standard. However, I will admit that the Larry Bird three-point challenge is the best looking part of the game. And is it just me or do the judges from the slam dunk contest look like Yogi Berra, financial guru Susie Armand, Stevie Wonder, Bo Jackson, and former NBA commissioner David Stern? Rumor has it Stevie Wonder can perfectly judge a dunk just from its sound. Sound and music wise, you have your standard EA Sports music and sound effects, which as always are pretty decent, although some may not like the constant crowd noise. Family friendly wise, I would assume that this game would get an E for everyone rating if released today. At the time of my research on eBay, including shipping, loose copies were going for $5 to $6 and complete copies were selling for $13 to $18. So what do I think of Jordan vs. Bird? Let me start out by saying that I was a pretty big fan of one-on-one -on -one basketball for the Atari 7800, which I reviewed in episode 63. So I was hoping to like this one too, but there are some problems with this one. In the one-on-one -on -one game, the movement of the players felt a little stiffer, almost like I was playing with Jordan and Bird robots. And the game misses some of the charm from the original, which had a backboard that occasionally shattered and a janitor who let you know that he didn't enjoy having to clean up the mess you just made. In a three-point contest, I ended up button mashing most of the time to go from movement to movement. It would have been better, in my humble opinion, if there were meters used for the different movements, and only one button was used instead of all three. For the slam dunk contest, the meter at the starting point was fine, but knowing when to release the ball wasn't as easy. Once again, adding another meter might have helped. And lastly, there just isn't a lot to do in the game. Adding more players to choose from or a couple other modes could have really helped. So in the end, you have three games in one, none of which really pulled me in. So where am I going to rank Jordan vs. Bird? Somewhat low. It does have more to offer than James Buster Douglas Knockout Boxing at 16, but I'd rather play Pit Fighter at 15. So out of the 22 games I've now ranked on the Sega Genesis, Jordan vs. Bird is doing a Larry Bird slam dunk into the 16 position. Even with 16-bit power to work with, Jordan vs. Bird fails to live up to its predecessor. So what do you think of the game? Whether you agree or disagree, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Also feel free to click the like and subscribe buttons and follow me both on Facebook or the Twitter. I'm also a member of the Retro Junkies Network. At this time, I'd like to thank Ryan N for supporting the show at patreon.com slash gamer. Thank you, Ryan. I really appreciate it. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day and I look forward to seeing you next time in the next episode of the Nosewear Gamer. Take care and watch out for dunking birds.